Hello? 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 Is there anybody there? Is there anybody there? Hello? I hope you are okay today. Hi everybody, this is Mr Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I really, really hope so. Here we are then. Oh my goodness. How is your Friday going? Is it a good Friday? <laughs> I think I will be doing that a lot today. I will be making some terrible, terrible jokes. Hi everybody, it's Mr Duncan. Yes, that's me. I'm now live in England on a glorious day. It's beautiful. I hope you are happy today because it is lovely out here. Welcome to Easter weekend and I thought it would be a nice opportunity to go live on YouTube. First of all I need to set some of the things up so let's see what's going on here. Oh it looks as if we have the live chat. Let me just get that prepared just to make sure that we can go live. Let's see shall we. Do, 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 do. I hope you are enjoying your Easter weekend. How is it going so far? Is it okay? I really hope so. Now at the moment I can't get the live chat on my screen and I don't know why. So let me just see if I can sort that out. <laughs> oh great, that's good. That's a good start, isn't it? Once again I can't get the live chat to appear on the screen. I don't know why. I sometimes have this problem with YouTube. So let's see if I can get this open. Well, this is a great start. For those who do live streams, here is a good tip for you. Always make sure that your equipment is working before you start doing your live stream. Okay, I think that should be all right now. We should have the live chat. <laughs> okay, I'm getting an advert. Let's just get rid of the intro and let's see if we have the live chat. <gasps> there it is. Yes, we have the live chat, everyone. I'm so happy to see you here today. Now, I do realise that some of you might be out and about because it is a special weekend for many people. Maybe if you are watching in South America, you might still be at church at the moment. A lot of people go to church on Good Friday and, of course, across Europe as well. So some of you might not be here at the moment, in which case I hope you have a super day all the same. Alam Gear, Hello, Alam Gear, Here we go. Yes, it's live English. I thought I would do something different today. So we are outside. I'm in the garden and I hope you can see me clearly, even though the sun is out and it's, it's actually quite a nice day. They think the temperature today will be about 22 degrees and tomorrow as well. And I might also be outside on Sunday because it looks as if Sunday is going to be a nice day also. Oh, Julie is here. Hello, Julie G. Nice to see you here today as well. Also, we have Nida. Hello, Nida. How are you? Where are you watching at the moment? It's great to be here once again. I haven't been very busy on YouTube this week because I've been preparing for something else. Something that you will find out about next week. That's all I'm saying for now. But yes, there is something special planned for next week. I hope you will be able to join me next week live during the week because we have something very very special for you. I can't I can't even hold it in. I really want to tell you what it is, but I'm not going to. Also we have Alam Gia. Also Julie. Oh hello Julie again. Anne Marie. Hello Anne Marie. Nice to see you here as well. Also Abbas. Hello Abbas. Where are you watching at the moment? Hello also to Bruna. Hello, Bruna. Nice to see you here on the live chat. 
Also, we have who else is here? We have Muren. Hi, Muren. Welcome to my live stream on a Friday. It feels very strange being here with you on Friday. Anne Marie, apparently, Anne Marie is watching in Canada. A big hello to Canada. One of Steve's relatives lives in Canada now. He's actually there as a teacher. Belarusia. Oh, hello, Belarusia. Nice to see you today. How's your mother? I hope she is OK. I hope she is all right. So, hello, I'm looking after my mother now. I She is still in hospital, but is feeling much better. So perhaps on Monday she will be going home. Oh, OK, that's really good news. I'm glad to hear that, Belarusia. Thank you for telling us and updating us about the situation with your mother. Hello to Ujwal. Hello to you watching in Nepal. I'm not sure how many people watch me in Nepal. I think it might be quite a few. How are you on this glorious day? Asks Kochi. Hello Kochi. I'm okay. Thank you very much. It's beautiful today. Would you like to have a quick look at the garden behind me? Everything is looking nice. And also, there are, just behind me, there are two birds building a nest right behind me. So, now and again, today, you might see some birds flying behind me. And they are building a nest. Two long-tailed tits are building nests at the moment. You might hear the occasional aeroplane go over, <laughs> like, like now, for instance. Hello, hello, Mr. Aeroplane. Oh, well, actually, it's a helicopter. It's not an aeroplane, it's a helicopter. Brazil is here. Hello, Brazil, from Bruna. Also, KH. Hello, KH Video, who is watching in Cambodia. Hello to you. Nice to see you here on the live stream. Yes, it's live from England today. It's English in your ear on a Friday because it is the weekend. Many people here in the UK are also having a holiday. So they are having a very long weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday. So Many people are enjoying this wonderful weather that we're having today. It feels very, very beautiful. Some people, of course, are getting very concerned because they think it's something to do with global warming. I'm not sure about that, but it is a lovely day today. Also, at the beginning, I thought there was behind you a green screen no this is real i can prove that this is real watch i'm going to walk around the garden just to prove that i'm really here and this isn't a green screen wait there let me just show you You see, the next thing people will say, they will say, no, Mr. Duncan, you're still cheating. That's that's CGI. <laughs> no, it isn't computer generated graphics. It is real. Everything behind you, everything behind me, you can see now is real. Whew, I'm out of breath. Anne Marie says it is raining here and very cold. Hello to Manoj. What is special? Today, today, everything is special because we are all alive in the world. Shubham says, please, can you teach us some songs? <laughs> to be honest, I'm not a very good singer, so I don't think I will be doing any songs today. Hello, Mr. Duncan from Guinea. Hello, Terimo or Thermo. Termo Malal. Hello to you. 
watching in Guinea. Nice to see you here. Also, I miss your Dunktober videos. Now, those are some videos that I did way back in 2013. Who remembers my Dunktober videos? <laughs> Hello from India. Shubham is here. Hello, Shubham Singh. Nice to see you here on the live chat. Nice day, Mr. Duncan. It is. It's a beautiful day. I can't believe how nice it is. Now, normally, when we have a public holiday here in England, normally it rains. So I'm feeling very happy that the weather has decided to stay nice. I'm amazed that no one has asked where Mr. Steve is. Normally, lots of people are asking, where's Mr. Steve? We want Mr. Steve. Can we see Mr. Steve? <laughs> OK, then, just for you. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mr. Steve. <laughs> no one was asking for me. I know, I can't believe it. No one was asking where you are. I see. I'm not wanted anymore. Is that it, Mr. Duncan? Maybe they thought you were at work. But no, it's a public holiday. So everyone in the UK is now having a day off. And it's a special well. long... It's a long weekend because it's Easter weekend. Unfortunately, not everybody gets the day off, Mr. Duncan. It's a bank holiday, but all the shops are open. OK. Um, so there's a lot of people still working today, hmm. unfortunately. So traditionally, when you had a bank holiday, so all the banks would close. And because businesses need to use the banks, also the businesses would close as well. So everywhere would be shut. But nowadays, lots of the shops stay open, don't they? They do. So it doesn't really feel like a special holiday anymore. But having said that, we are definitely taking it easy. And we would like to share our lovely afternoon with you. Well, I'd rather be in the garden, but I thought I'd come and help you, Mr. Duncan. Well, we are in the garden. <laughs> I meant actually gardening. Oh, I see. I've got an awful lot to do in the garden, Mr. Duncan. Really? Yes. OK, then. Digging, putting plants in, uh, trimming bushes, uh, all sorts of things. And uh, you've got to get the plants in at this time of the year. Otherwise, they don't grow very much and uh, before the winter. So I want to get get in here just get some action and get things going yes okay then kotanas kotankas hello kotankas hello for the first time i am present in your live chat on the channel do not tell me what you can learn do not tell me what you can learn on your channel okay i won't tell you i think you mean do tell me oh well here we teach english we talk about the english language we talk about lots of different subjects and sometimes you can chat to us live like now because it is a Friday and I hope you are having a good Friday. <laughs> see this what, is sort of, see. Oh, I see. see yes, what, see? <laughs> yes, because are we going to talk about uses of the word good? We will later. Yes. Let's say some hellos first of all, because there are lots of people on the live chat. Hello, Carlos. Hi, Mr. Duncan. Nice to see you. Yes, today is a public holiday in Spain. Also, it isn't as good weather as there. I like I like the upside down world. Here it is cloudy and also it might rain later. Well, here we are having the most amazing day. Also the sheep are out. You might if we if we Ecoute. Can you hear the sheep? They've gone quiet just because you are... No. <laughs> there was always a saying, wasn't there? Come on, sheep. <laughs> Every time we talk, the sheep start calling. There was always a saying when we grew up about Spain and rain. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plain. Yes, yeah, that's actually from Pygmalion. And it was used to try and help you pronounce words, wasn't it? English yes. words. The rain in Spain 
falls mainly on the plane. Yes. It was designed to help your pronunciation. 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 <laughs> there's a there's to a make cer- you clearer. There's a certain irony of not being able to pronounce pronunciation. Pronunciation, I can say it. I can say it, Mr. Duncan. Okay, then. We have fun here as well. So if anyone's new watching and they think this is a serious English channel, uh, when we're doing the live streams, we're having a bit of fun. We're interacting with you and answering questions. It's like an open forum, really. Why, why do you sound like you've got a cold? Uh, it's probably... I don't know, do I? Yeah, do you sound like you're, you're, you've got a cold do or something? Do I sound blocked up you, like I'm talking through a blocked nose, you, Mr Duncan? You sound terrible. I saw Pedro. Hello, Pedro. Tias is here. Hello, teacher. I am Hello, very... Tias. I am very envious with your nice weather... In my place, it is after seven o'clock at night and we have heavy rain. I'm sure in Indonesia, you, you have a lot of tropical storms. No electricity. Oh, I see, really? Yes. Oh. The electricity is off. Yes, that can happen sometimes. If there, if there is thunder and lightning, the lightning can strike the electricity cables and you can lose your electricity. Not, not very nice. I hope you get your electricity back soon which which of course begs the question how are you watching us now how are you watching us if you have no electricity interesting maybe solar panels yes maybe who knows nice to see that you have beautiful weather says mr bruno it is a lovely weekend here you can move over there slightly steve (laughs) trying to push me off no, there you go. You can I know what you do, Mr. Duncan. You can still see the screen. You there, like it is. all the attention. No, you, you you get as much attention as I do. I'm only joking. In fact, I think sometimes Steve gets more attention than I do, and it makes me very jealous. Hello to Lolly Lolly, also Belarusia. By the way, Belarusia's mother might be coming out of hospital on Monday. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, good wishes for that. Yep. Uh, so she must be making progress. That's fantastic. Um, Can we have more Mr. Steve in your videos? Because we like you both. Thank you, Abbas. So apparently we, we have to have more of you and me together. More of me. Well. You know how I like to perform, Mr. Duncan. Not too much of you. <laughs> not, not too much of you. A couple of more hellos and then we will talk about something else. Why do I understand you 100% but only but only 20 to 30% when I listen to Sherlock Holmes isn't that str- so when Sherlock Holmes is talking <laughs> I only hear understand 30% well I've heard mm. that Sherlock Holmes sometimes talks very quickly so that might be the reason is this the the new Sherlock Holmes or or uh... maybe it is yes maybe because modern actors now we struggle to understand what they're saying uh, in films as well, don't we, Mr. Duncan? Because particularly uh, American programmes where they, uh, the art of acting on television and film has changed over the years and now people tend to talk more like they do in real life. So it's sometimes difficult to understand they don't pronunciate pronunciate the words correctly. Ironically, Mr. Steve can't say pronunciate. They sort of mumble in modern film. So I can, if we find it as English speakers, if we are finding modern films difficult to understand, then if you're trying to learn English, it's going to be even more difficult. So listen to, listen to older films and you will find that people are talking a lot clearer uh, and you will be able to understand what they are saying. A lot of people can understand Charlie Chaplin, but then he, he was making silent films, so maybe that's the reason why. <laughs> yes, yeah, so yes, you're not alone. Modern films are difficult to understand yes. dialogue. And the, the other thing as well, I've noticed in some movies, is... With all of the the noises and the special effects uh, they, they put they they put too much noise and music on the film and then you can't understand what the people are actually saying that's a good point mr yes. duncan so the the yes the special effects of the music are, are <laughs> drowning out the dialogue remember when we watched um, interstellar interstellar is a brilliant movie but you and i could not hear a word 
Matthew McConaughey was saying. First of all, Matthew McConaughey has a very strong accent, but also they had so many sound effects in the movie, you couldn't actually hear what people were saying. Do you remember that? I do, I do remember. We sat there watching Interstellar, which is a really good movie. It's a great movie, but you couldn't understand a single word anyone said because of all the, the special sound effects in Matthew McConaughey. He sort of talks like that. You can't understand what Matthew McConaughey says. And uh, you can only assume that the dialogue wasn't worth listening to. <laughs> it must have been poor dialogue. And they must have, uh, put the, they must have edited it so that, the, uh, so that they covered up the dialogue with, uh, with music and special effects. You know, the, you know what Interstellar is all about? It's all about black holes. Which has been on the news. Oh, so we've got somebody watching us in Afghanistan. Hello to Abbas. Abbas, uh, Abbas again. Abbas is the one who, that said yeah. that he wanted to see more of you. Really? Yes. Well. So hello to Abbas. That's up to Mr. Duncan. Hello to Abbas watching in Afghanistan. Shall we have a look at some uses of the word good? Because today is Good Friday. I'm sure some of my viewers will actually be at church at the moment, celebrating Good Friday. So if, if you're not here yet, don't worry. You can watch this again later. It will be repeated again on YouTube forever and ever until planet Earth gets swallowed up by the sun when it goes supernova. So I... it's amazing. We've got a few billion years yet. We can be doing live streams for about another five billion years before we have to worry about the Earth being swallowed up by an expanding sun. Yes, apparently that's what will happen. Eventually the sun will die and then what happens is the sun will expand and it will keep getting larger and larger and it will just evaporate the Earth. We don't have to worry about that, Mr Duncan. Of far greater worry, however. Really? I'm segueing neatly in. Oh, I see. Segway. Segway. Segway means to go from one thing to another seamlessly. So if you go from one thing to another seamlessly, we call it a segway. Segway. It's also one of those little things you ride around on with, with the two wheels. Did you know the guy that invented the segway died on a segway? I did know that. He went over the edge of a cliff. He did. On his Segway. That's a, that's a true fact. That is, that is terrible. That's, that's a real tragedy. And, and also a real example of irony. That's great. I'm not sure if it's irony. Is it irony? I th well, I think it's very ironic that you invent a device and then you, then you actually die on it. Yes, I suppose I so. That's ironic. But yes, I was. Th there was a lovely, neat segue. But now <laughs> you've explained the use of the word segue, and now my segue has now been ruined by your explanation okay, of then. segue. Okay, let's segue into what Mr. Steve wants to talk about, and we, we will do it seamlessly, so no one will notice that we are now doing a segue. So don't just pretend that you can't notice that. Just pretend that you didn't see that. OK, so what, what did you want to talk about, Steve? Only because we were talking about uh, environment in terms of the uh, sun expanding in a few million years time. But mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, our own environmental problems right here, right now. Do we? Yes. And there have been some mass protests uh, in England, specifically in London, over the last few days. Yes, London and Scotland. And Scotland, about uh, young people, people of all ages, um, uh, 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 trying to make a protest against, the, against climate change. Mm. Uh, they call themselves uh, the Extinction Rebellion. Yes. Damn you, climate. Damn you... So yes, we've got some very real protests going on, which is causing a lot of disruption. Um, so uh, yes, anybody taking part in those protests watching us today? I don't know. Very much doubt it, but uh, we'd like to know. I don't. I think they're having the day off today. I think. I think all the protesters and environmentalists are taking 
today are. It's a very peaceful protest, but they are causing a lot of disruption. But I then think... maybe that's the price you have to pay to get the message across. Uh, that what, something needs to change. What, what do you mean, the price to pay? The price to pay, so uh, a disruption. Okay. Uh, so they want to get a message across. Nobody's been listening. Um, they've been writing articles and, and appearing on uh, television programmes, but nobody's listening. They think nobody's listening yes. to their protests. So now they've taken to the streets uh, and by causing all this disruption, they get a lot of news coverage and... Uh, they think it's all for a good cause. Mm, okay, so so, um, so what will that change then? Well, they are trying to get people to listen. They're trying to get people to listen. We do we do know about uh, we do know about global warming. We've been talking about it for the last thirty years. So you know we do know about it. You don't have to keep reminding us. It's like people who raise awareness of of illnesses. We we know that they exist. You don't have to keep raising awareness. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure that blocking the roads and causing lots of inconvenience to people that are just trying to live, live every day of their life just to get through the one day so they can earn a bit of money. And then all these people block the roads, they, they glue themselves to the buses. Yes, they've been gluing themselves so they actually, to public transport. They, they actually put strong glue. Super glue super glue on their hands and they stick themselves to the inside of the trains or on the outside of buses and it's caused all sorts of trouble but my problem with this is that I think a lot of them are hypocritical so because the reason is how do they get there because apparently they've been coming from all over the UK to, to protest in London so how have they been getting there? I would imagine they've been driving their cars. So the very thing that they're protesting against is the thing that they're using to get from where they live to London so they can protest about people driving cars. So it seems a little hypocritical. Today, Hollywood actress Emma Thompson has arrived in London after flying five and a half thousand miles from Los Angeles to take part in a demonstration about people that use planes to travel from one place to another. Again, irony. It's a little hypocritical. And ironic. Yes. Uh, but I suppose you have to look at, you have to look at both sides. That's what we do on, on, uh, Mr. Duncan's live English lessons. We, we look at both sides of the story. That's what you have to do. Mm. They strongly believe there is an issue with climate change and that governments are not making enough progress. So um, how else can you do that? You have to use some transport and use a bit of, create a bit of CO2 <laughs> in order to do that. But of course, they're hoping that in the long run, yeah, but there you're will be telling... policy changes that will result yeah. in a lowering of CO2. But you can't levels. tell people not to do something when you are doing it at the same time. There was a guy mm. yesterday on television who was, was talking about, you know, we must save the planet. You must stop going on holiday. You must stop traveling by plane. And it turns out that there's nothing he enjoys more than traveling around the world yes. by plane, visiting lots of different places. So you can't mm. tell people not to go on holiday if you yourself are going on holiday, because that makes you a hypocrite. You are telling people not to do something when you do it yourself. And of course, a lot of people have pointed out that a, that a lot of pe people have pointed out that a lot of people on the protests are quite well to do. They're quite sort of middle class. Yes, they're wealthy, uh, educated, wealthy people. Uh, and uh, as you say, they are being a bit hypocritical because what they've said is that they want air, uh, they want planes only to be used for emergencies. Yes. So they're literally saying nobody should ever go on a plane yes. unless it's an emergency. So, so Emma, Tho um, Emma Thompson got, got on, got got on a plane in her in her thousand dollar clothing 
and then got, got to London and then she changed into some old scruffy looking old clothes yes so she could be photographed with all of these people protesting in London mm. but, but she's just been on a plane that is the very thing that they are protesting against so she, she could have just stayed in America she could have stayed in Los Angeles and just sent a message by a video she could have done so she doesn't have to go all the way to London on a plane in first class and then of course after she's done that she will fly all the way back so it's not just one flight it's two because then she will go back to Los Angeles <laughs> to sit in a it sit. gets worse apparently she'd already just flown back from London anyway but she'd been here anyway she flew back and then she's flown back again now she's gone back home, home again yeah so she's actually made uh, four journeys i don't like uh, not, to, not i don't like one. people who are hypocritical or who are hypocrites they can't they tell you not to do something but they do it themselves and that's that's probably one of the reasons why sometimes i i disagree with religion and people who are religious <laughs> That's it. That's all I'm saying. You said we weren't going to talk about religion. Today. No, I'm not going to. That's it. That's all I'm saying. So sometimes people can be very hypocritical. They say you shouldn't do that particular thing. But then they go away and they do it themselves. They do it. If you uh, want to talk the talk, yeah, you've got to walk the walk. Yes. Well, don't tell an expression don't, that means yes don't tell people what to do if you are not going to follow those rules yourself it's like a going to the doctor and uh, he tells you that you've got to lose weight and stop smoking and he's overweight and you you see him smoking uh, when he's outside his surgery mm. so you don't have any trust or faith in people if yes. they don't do yes. what they are, are yes. telling you or think that you should be doing yes if you go to the doctors and he says you, you have to give up smoking and drinking and then the following week you go into the local bar and there is the doctor sitting there with a cigarette in his mouth drinking a pint of beer and you might think oh wait a moment he's he's being a hypocrite he's telling me not to do something but he's doing it himself i don't think anyone's interested in what we're talking about because there hasn't been a single comment this is this is very so, very interesting this is a very interesting subject climate change activists yes uh anyway is anyway, anyone interested in climate change well well it doesn't matter it doesn't matter you you you've said your piece you've said the thing you want to say I really like the fact that you address hot burning issues in your live stream. Thank you, Lilia. Thank you, Lilia, for that. Well, I, th I think it's good to talk about things. The worst thing to do in, in life, and this is what I always talk about when I talk about relationships. Relationships, the real secret of keeping a relationship going and keep keeping it healthy is to communicate. The moment you stop talking to each other is when problems arise. So that's the reason why I always think it's good to talk about things, even if the subject might be a little controversial or maybe some people might disagree. But then next week we might be talking about something else and maybe you will agree with what we're talking about. So maybe one week you will disagree with us, but maybe the following week you will agree with what we're saying so it's all it's all about communication I think it's always good to talk and that's why I think in relationships it's always a good thing to communicate openly I think that's why we've known each other for nearly 30 years because we always talk about things don't we we always talk about our problems the things that are on our minds 30 e years even sometimes we disagree with each other Oh, and we, we have punch-ups, you know, and uh, bloody noses. Sometimes we have to, we end up in casualty. Uh, the neighbours have to call the police. That happens all the time. Yes, we've, uh, we've been in the police station many times. <laughs> Not really. Af after being arrested, they, they drag us away by our legs. Here's an interesting fact for you about, about uh, the use of world resources. OK. 80% uh, of the world's natural resources are used by only 10% of the world's population. OK. 
uh, basically the West. Yes, uh, I could name the country straight away. We are consuming. So Europe, um, I would say USA, the USA uh, maybe places like Australia, China, of course, let's not forget. Ah, yes, but, but in, in terms of proportion of population, uh, they're not yet. But that's the, 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 the two big issues. And the big worry is that when the rest of the world then is, is consuming at the same rate uh, as the West is, wealthy countries, I should say, probably is the, the best way to describe that now, yes. then um, there's going to be the, 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 the amount of resources that are used are going to, it's going to escalate dramatically. Yeah. Uh, so population is a big problem. But also because we live in capitalist countries here in the West, uh, uh, then the, the whole point of a capitalist economy is to get people to keep buying things and using things and throwing them away and buying new things. Uh, and while we've still got that, uh, resources are going to be used up in increasing quantities. So it's a real paradox, really. Mm. Uh, well, the, how are we going to address these yes. problems? Well, is, isn't that the that that's the age-old problem with any any sort of development that takes place? Every time you develop something new, there is always a, a consequence or or many consequences. So, if you want to have a country that's prosperous, you have to you have to manufacture things because then you will employ people to make the things. But then also you need people to buy the things as well. So they have to have money as well. So it's, it's, a constant, it's a constant machine that's always running. So I think capitalism is not necessarily, not necessarily a bad thing, but the consequences and the side effects can be quite, quite devastating. And one of them, of course, is the environmental damage. Last week we, we were watching a news report about there, there's a coastline, I can't remember where it is now or where it was, but apparently the, the ocean is just covered mm. with, with plastic. Uh, Lilia uh, makes that very point. Uh, yes, plastics, oil, uh, it's, it's not getting any better. Mm. We thought actually because when I was growing up in the 1970s, they were doing a lot to clean up the environment and they did do an awful lot because we used to be quite, all the rivers are quite badly polluted in this country. But uh, around the world, because of huge population uh, increases, then uh, do you know, even in Europe alone, there are five million uh, babies born every year just in Europe alone. Yes, anyway, we did that last week. Did we? Right. Yes, we've done that one already. Let's not go down. What does controversial mean? I was just asked a question, an English question. What does controversial mean? I, I can't find it now. Ahmad, Ahmad Tahar asks, what is the meaning of controversial? Something that's controversial often creates an argument. So maybe some people will disagree with a certain thing that's been done or said or created so something that creates a, a very lively debate or maybe arguments so you have one side that agrees with something and another side that disagrees they are very angry about something so you will describe the thing that they are talking about the thing they are disagreeing about or disagreeing over can be described as controversial so maybe something you say or maybe something you've done or maybe something you've created might cause people to become outraged. Yes, politics is a controversial subject. Yes. Religion is a controversial subject. Mm. Climate change, often in subjects where there isn't a definitive yes or no or clear-cut answer to what you're talking about, can be contra talking about race issues is controversial yes because there's uh, always two sides that's right and it can evoke or uh, produce emotional responses in people uh, when there's a strong emotional impact to what you're saying 
that can often be described as, as something that's controversial, mm, something so. that maybe you shouldn't be talking about, or yes. something that something that uh, hasn't been sorted out mm. yet. Which kind of comes back to what we were talking about a few minutes ago about what we talk about on here. So last Sunday we we got into a very deep conversation about religion, and, and we gave different sides of, of the opinion. So that's one of the reasons why we do this is because it creates something that creates discussion in other places. So I think I think it's quite a nice thing. Sometimes it's good to talk about things. I think so. A few uh, a few uh, points about uh, capitalism. Uh, Lilia must be very well read because she's quoting philosopher uh, Eric from said that capitalism makes people unhappy because it encourages individualism and people no longer feel they belong to something bigger than themselves and so they feel lonely. Hmm. And that is true because capitalism is all about you creating wealth for yourself. Yes, or, uh, or, or satisfying those, those basic urges. Yes. So maybe if you, if you have a, a mobile phone and then next year... You say, oh, this phone is old, it's old, I, I, I feel as if I'm out of touch. All my friends will say, oh, you, you've still got that old phone, you've still got that out-of-date phone, so you have to go and buy a new one. So part of it also is being wasteful, but you always think this new thing will make you feel better. You always think that your life will be better once you've bought this thing this new device or this new item of clothing but of course that feeling that feeling of joy only lasts for a very short time mm. and then a couple of weeks later you, you are you are still empty inside you still need to fill that that big hole inside because it's, it's when, when you you don't realize you watch television we, we are constantly bombarded with, with images to encourage us to be envious of other people and their possessions. That's part of advertising. And that's what advertising does. It, 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 it wants to make you envious of your neighbour mm. so that you will go out and get a bigger car or a newer car because you want to make them envious. As mm. Dr. Duncan said, it's encouraging uh, forms of, forms of behaviour which really aren't very productive in no. the long term no. so we're in, we're in a situation now where we're discouraged from keeping hold of things and using them until they stop working mm. like for example you could have a kettle uh, or a car I mean a car for example there's a classic example a modern car would probably last 20 or 30 years easily but we're encouraged to change them every two to three years so that we can get a shiny new car on the drive. Yes. But all that's doing is encouraging more cars to be made. Yes, but then uh, that, that car manufacturing helps the economy mm. of the country where those cars are being made. And that's what I talked about earlier, yes. about about this, this capitalism. But of, of course, in other countries that don't have a capitalist society, so you can have socialist societies that are also buying things or, or wanting things so it's not not just about capitalism okay i know someone has already said mr duncan it, it's also it's also socialism mm. as well See, that's so. interesting lilia is saying that uh, the ukraine is is becoming uh, an aggressive capitalist society mm. and it's getting hard to stay so she lilia is seeing this change taking place probably in a very short space of time Whereas here in England, it would have happened over a much more gradual period of time. Mm. Um, uh, and so it's changing the nature of society. Yeah. Well, uh, the, well, they're trying to catch up. You've got uh, especially a good example, of course, is, is, is China. There we go. Yes. It's <laughs> China where, where 20 years ago, 30 years ago, China was pretty much undeveloped. But now huge areas of China are now these incredibly modern, sophisticated cities. Although, having said that, many of them are almost empty. So they, they've built lots of cities, but the rest of the population hasn't had a chance or hasn't had time 
to catch up with that development and so that's why normally development takes place over a long period of time if you do it quickly then you have to make sure the, the people or the population also are catching up as well or else it ends up being a big disaster and that has happened in China so there are large ghost cities across China where you have these amazing buildings but there's no one living there they and uh, all the resources that took to, to, to build those Palmyra says in Lithuania we can return all bottles and get 10 cents for one unit uh, well that used to be when we grew up you would milk would be delivered in in bottles glass bottles mm -hmm. uh, you would buy soft drinks in glass bottles yeah. and you would return them all but now I mean in the last 20 years that's all gone everything is in plastic now mm. or cardboard and the everything's thrown away uh, we we need to return back to that well that, that is um, happening that is happening they're they're actually on about now um, having having similar schemes for for plastic bottles and and things that you would otherwise throw away so maybe you can return things to 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 a place maybe a shop or a place that is part of a certain scheme and then you you can get a small amount of money every time you take something back to be recycled was i saw a program about a certain soft drinks company we won't mention the name no don't mention coca-cola uh in uh, in africa somewhere and uh they they had a had a facility there that uh, manufactured their 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 soft drink beverages in glass bottles and you could return the bottles uh but they've uh, they've got rid of that now because of course when you return the bottles uh, they all get a bit scratched after an, after a number of years as they reused and uh, they didn't think that that made their product look very nice so they scrapped all the they scrapped all the the, the uh, reusable recyclable glass bottles and moved to plastic bottles and guess what happened to the local environment plastic bottles just were everywhere hmm. so you know the co companies have a lot to answer for sometimes well yes but that's that that's the problem with with progress certain types of progress are great they might seem as if they have a lot of benefits but there is always a price to pay there's always a price to pay for anything that that moves humanity or society forwards there is always a price to pay we've got to find uh, a happy medium mm. where wealth is more evenly distributed and everyone can benefit and uh, we need to encourage uh, people not to keep buying new stuff just for the sake of it uh, just to impress their neighbors uh, or as L Lydia said uh, to impress people you don't even know or like yes uh, well th this is but well, but that also stems from another thing where people just want to to do things to impress other people so it's like what you said earlier about advertising advertising is all about making you feel as if you don't have the right clothing or the right phone or maybe your breath smells or maybe you have dandruff so all advertising is is designed to make you feel really crappy about yourself and then you will go out and buy these things so you might think oh no one likes me i have no friends because i don't have a nice car i need to get a new car or maybe they don't admire me at work because I don't have nice clothes. So everything is about you mm. feeling as if you are not worthy. And so you will keep going out and buying things. Now, we don't really do that, do we? I wouldn't say that we are people who buy things all the time. No. I mean, the hat I'm wearing here, I bought about seven, maybe eight years ago. So I bought this eight years ago in Turkey. But I still wear it. So uh, quite often we, we use things. We, we don't spend much money on clothes. We don't buy mm. things. The house is fairly simple. We don't have expensive things everywhere. Expensive paintings and expensive ornaments. So everything is fairly simple. Well, I'm still using 
plates that uh, were given to me, well not given to me, when my grandparents died about 30 years ago. Hmm. Uh, we're still using plates uh, from there because I like them and there's nothing wrong with them. And it's, it's difficult, isn't it, to... Um, people judge you on your appearance. So if you go out and you're in a posh car and you've got expensive clothes and jewellery, uh, that's going to make some people feel good because it's, it makes them feel superior hmm. and it makes them feel good. Yes. And it's very difficult. Uh, actually, I used to get comments because I, I had to change my car recently, but the last car I ran, I had for eight years. Hmm. And I kept getting people saying to me, uh, virtually saying to me, oh, well, I'm so sorry, you know... Uh, yeah, they're almost saying, almost implying that I couldn't afford yes. to buy a new car. So because because your car was eight years old, mm. people thought Steve was poor or maybe yes. living in poverty because his car wasn't wasn't the brand new model. People judge you on 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 superficial appearance, and uh, uh, you've got to try and overcome that in your in your mind. It's very yes. difficult in modern society where you're bombarded by. Yes. The the need to, to to constantly buy new things and and uh, and and buy new clothes and 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 impress everybody mm. else around. It's it's very difficult to resist that. Yes, actually. So so we treat ourselves now and again, not all the time. Just sometimes, it's nice to have a little treat sometimes. So you you buy something or you give yourself mm. something now and again, not all the time. So you can become obsessed with shopping to make yourself feel better or maybe you think you have to keep impressing people around you with your new phone yes. or your new car or your new jewelry jeff's pointed out of course that i do want to buy a new ford mustang ah hypocrite oh, you're a hypocrite yes but what i'll do is i'll keep it for like 20 years yes so um there's a paradox because it's a bit of a gas guzzler Mm, this is uh, it, see, but so, if yes. I keep it for a lot, because when you when you manufacture a new car, it uses apparently uh, the amount of energy needed to, to 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 make a new car is the equivalent to running the car for a hundred thousand miles mm. on, with, with all the petrol. Yes. So you are definitely better off keeping a car in the long run, even though it might be slightly more polluting than the modern cars, mm. because overall. Uh, you, you, you will result in less pollution if you keep them. But, mm. of course, that's not what we're encouraged to do. No. But it's always, again, about moving forward. So, so everyone has to improve their lifestyle. But you can improve your lifestyle without going out spending lots of money on jewellery and nice clothes and things like that. So you can, you can treat yourself like we do sometimes, but... I would definitely say w that we are not obsessed with no. with buying stuff. I think it's safe to say. Lily is making a lot of good points, uh, talking about the, the fact that people should move up the social ladder based on talents that they have. Well, that used to be the case. I probably still is, but uh, um, talents and uh, aren't encouraged as much now. It's 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 all uh, society has changed dramatically. Uh, since we grew up as children. Uh, um, yes, I, I don't think people are encouraged so much to to develop their talents and, and do things. This is what I find now. See, I'm, at, I'm in all these amateur dramatic societies and choirs and we can't get young people to join them. And if you talk to anybody about joining a choir, a young person, they will... They automatically, they say, well, what's in it for me? How am I going to get paid? Because they see X Factor and talent shows. X Factor? Uh, and, and they just assume that if they want to do any singing or any acting, then they've got to be paid for it, or it's got to lead to, to, to celebrity. Yes, well, uh, that's, that's, but that's, that, that goal is very sort of narrow, isn't it? They'd, they say, uh, it used to annoy me where when you would hear young people being asked what do you want to be when you grow up and they would say i want to be famous uh, but that really isn't a thing to do so being famous isn't the thing you do that is sometimes a consequence 
of the thing you do so you do something and then if you're lucky someone will notice you or maybe you have a certain talent that people like or admire and then you become famous so that's it so you don't necessarily become famous just to be famous although I think nowadays some people might disagree with me there Palmyra says says miss M mr. Duncan mr. Duncan you have your watch from Lithuania now mr. Steve bought this for me last year for my birthday but then that was a treat a treat so I don't buy new watches every week and the, you'd only got one other watch which was about 20 years old yeah so so I had an old watch uh, I have a couple of other watches but they're very old watches so Steve bought this for me last year for my birthday but that's it I, I haven't had anything since then and we, we don't we don't buy things all the time the environmental impact of making a watch i would say was relatively low hmm. uh, i shouldn't think much co2 was uh passed into the atmosphere yes. by anyway, making the watch probably best that we don't draw too much attention to that yes. but yes i do have a nice watch i'm wearing it now i'm not hiding it ronald says uh money doesn't bring happiness but i prefer crying on a ferrari <laughs> wouldn't yeah. we all that's it yes <laughs> but but i think i think the problem is with with many some people buy things and have lots of things and they are happy but what you will find is it is if you become obsessed with it it's becomes it, like a drug it will eventually destroy you because you need you, a new well yeah. because you 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 need a new fix every every week you have to have this new thing to make you feel better there is a genuine reaction inside your body so you have a release of endorphins which are pleasure chemicals so when you buy something you get excited when when you have it in your hand or when you're opening a box something new you feel this rush of pleasure and that's the reason why people do it because it is like a drug I think we've talked enough about the environment. Well, we, well, we talked about of. lots of things there, though. So, so that that particular subject covers many things. So, are there some uses of the word "good"? Because today is Good Friday. Are you having a Good Friday? <laughs> it is Good Friday. It I, is. It is, and uh, there are many uses of the word "good," are there not, Mr. Duncan? I believe uh, there are. I believe so. Yes. Mm. So, uh, for example, we're having a good day, aren't we, Mr. Duncan? Today we are, uh, and we hope you're having a good day watching us. If you've got, uh, if you're ready to do something, then you can say, "I'm good for another." For, I, I'm good for something. Mm. I'm good for another game, for example. Yes. Oh, I'm. I'm good for that. Yes. How about, uh, should we do an English lesson on Sunday, Mr. Duncan? You might ask me and I might say, yes, I'm good for that. Mm. So it means I want to do it. That's it. I'm I, ready to do I it. I feel as if I would like to do it. I'm good for it. If a, person, if a person wants to borrow money from you or if they, they want you to lend some money to them, then you might ask if they are good for it. If they are good for it, that means I will lend you some money, but will you give the money back? Will you give me the money back? And the person borrowing the money will say, yes, I'm, I'm good for it. I'm good for it. Don't worry. You will get your money back. Yes, it means they you can trust them. They're reliable mm. using the word good in that way. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got uh, enough of something, ample supplies of something, or a substantial amount of something you can say for example if you've got a, a substantial amount of money or a good wage you might say you've got a good income ah a good income a good income which means you've got probably more than you need a substantial not excessive but you've got uh, more than what you need to cover all your mm. all your bills yes. and uh, it's a good it means you, it, it, you've got a substantial amount of something mm -hmm. if something is pleasant you can say you're having a good time a good time mm. 
We're having a good time today, aren't we, Mr. We Duncan? are having a very good time, and I hope you are too. If something is favourable, for example, the weather might be favourable, you would say that we're having good weather. Hmm. We're having good weather. We are having very good uh, weather. Uh, if something is... I mean, you, you can use good in a negative way as well. If something is useless or it's futile, you might say, it's no good you complaining, mm. for example. If, 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 if something is, 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 is... If you want to say something or do something and it's not going to result in any benefit or it's pointless you doing something because there's going to be no positive outcome, you might say, it's no good doing that. Mm. It's pointless. It's, yes. It's, for example, if you wanted to complain, but your complaint was, wasn't going to be heard, you might say to somebody, oh, it's no good you complaining. No one's going to listen mm. to you. It's, it's no good complaining about the weather. You can't change it. It's, there's no point doing it. There is... It's, it's no good doing that. It is pointless. If something uh, is as good as new... Okay. If something is as good as new, it means it's very nearly as it was when it was new. Mm. Not quite there, but as good... When you say as good as new, you don't mean... It's exactly as it was when you mm. bought it. You might buy uh, a new car. For, you might buy a second-hand car. Mm -hmm. And it might be described in the advert as as good as new. Mm. Which means that its appearance is pretty much... They've mm. been looked after and it's pretty much as it was when it yeah. was new. You might see this on eBay. eBay, if you're buying something that is pre-owned or second-hand. So that means it's been owned by someone else. You might see on the the advertisement it might say one for sale one television as good as new it doesn't mean it's in perfect condition but it, it's it's as good as new it, it looks okay it's the it's advertiser fine. is telling you it's been well looked after hmm. and there aren't any scratches on it it's yes. still old but it's it, you know, all appearance sake, it's as when, good as when new. You, when you renew something or when you make something look better than it did before, maybe you can feel as good as new. Maybe if you are feeling tired, you go to bed, you have a nice sleep, you get up and you, oh, wow, I, I, feel, I feel as good as new. Yes, you, you, might, you might take, you might uh, um, have an old table or an old piece of furniture, and you might restore it and make it look uh, good again, you might say it looks as good as new. Yes. Uh, and in fact, for something like a piece of furniture that won't deteriorate over time, then you probably could sell it and, and say it, it, it really was that very close to what it was when mm. it was new. Of course, you can also say perfect condition. So if you, if you say it's in perfect condition then that, that is even better because that means it is untouched. Maybe it is still in the box. It is in perfect condition. Uh, another use of the word good if, to, to describe something that's permanent. Um, so, for example, you might say, I'm moving to France for good. That means you're going to France and you're going to permanently stay there. That's it. Or when I came back from China. Yes. When I came back from China, I came back to the UK for good. For exactly. good. So that means permanently I came back to the UK for good. You had I, no intention of ever going back. That's it. So, well, not necessarily that, but I was going to stay in the UK for, for the foreseeable future. So, for good. So, back. I am back for good. I am back permanently or for the foreseeable future. Uh, you can use a phrase, um, I'll do something when I'm good and ready. Mm. I'll do something when I'm good and ready. It means you'll do it uh, when, it's, when it's the right time for mm. you. When I'm good and ready, I will start losing weight. Yes. When I'm good and ready. Yes, I might say to Mr Duncan, oh, I think you need to lose a bit of weight. And you might say back to me, I'll do that when I'm good and ready. In other words, when he wants to do it, not when I want him to do it. Um, where's Mr Duncan going? <laughs> 
you can have a good person, a person who is who is who's, who's got excellent attributes, a good person, a person who doesn't commit sins hmm. or do bad things, uh, a good person, a person who is uh, as opposed to a bad person. Uh, Mr. Duncan's not really bad, but somebody who's who's pleasant, who who has high moral standards, and uh, that's is, uh, that's neither of us. <laughs> You can have a good family name, for example, if all members of your fa- if you've got a family uh, with lots of children, grandparents, parents, and they're well known in the local community or in the local town, mm-hmm. uh, whatever their name is, you might describe them as having uh, they've got a good family name, they've or they've got a good name. Hmm. Uh, you come back a bit, Steve. You- I notice this of Steve. He gets he gets closer and closer to everything. Oh, right. He sort of shuffles like this. You 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 move nearer and nearer and nearer. If you've got a good name, you do it again. <laughs> I'm not. You're distracting. Uh, if you've got a good name, it means that you've over a period of time, you have demonstrated that you are a good person. You might be caring, or you might be honest in your business transactions. Uh, that sort of thing. And you could tell well, you've got a good name. He's got a good name. In other words, a good reputation. Can you think of any others, Mr. Duncan? No, you've... you've you, um, oh, maybe if you are visiting someone's house and you, and you are there during the afternoon and you all sit down together and maybe the host offers you a drink and they say, oh, would you like a cup of coffee? And instead of saying no, they say, I'm good, thanks. I'm good. I'm good, thanks. That means I'm, I'm, I'm OK. I, I don't want a cup of tea. I'm good. I'm good. It, so it's a polite way. It's another way of saying no, thank you. Or yes. no, I don't want it. So would you, like a, would, you, would you like something to eat? I'm good. I'm good. It means I don't, I don't want the thing that you've offered. I don't want it. So I'm good. I think that's about it. I, wow. I've, uh, we've done quite a few uses. Of the, uh, Jeff says it's always a good time uh, uh, live. And somebody else says that. Are, are you going to do this regularly on a Friday? This is only today because it's Good Friday. It's, it's the public holiday. So Steve, Steve, bless him. Steve is off from work, aren't you? I am, yes, because it's it's a bank holiday today and on Monday. That's it. So it's a long weekend. So it's for a long weekend. For, for everyone us. in the UK, we have a very long weekend. I'm not getting too excited today, I don't think. Um, oh, Belarusia says, I'm using my mobile phone now. I'm looking after my mum. She's still in hospital. She's asleep. OK. Well, let's hope that she's returning home very soon yes i've already told you on monday oh, i know but i'm just i'm just That's saying it. again oh, okay i can say it again if i want mr duncan you can for a moment there wish i wish belarusi uh, and, and her mother well wishes mr duncan can you please make some comedy shows like full english thank you alan gear now the reason why i stopped making my full english lessons and this is a very long boring story so i'm not going to tell you the whole story but let's just say it had something to do with YouTube. Now, YouTube in the past have done some stupid things to me to make my viewing figures drop, and my subscriber figures fall. Lots of things have changed over the past four or five years, if not longer. So one of the reasons why I stopped making my full English lessons is because they take a very long time to make. So maybe 10 or 12 days to, to produce one, one full English lesson. So that's a lot of time and energy. And, and then I, I publish it on YouTube and no one watches it or it gets very few viewers. So all of that effort is kind of wasted. Yes. It's kind of wasted because YouTube kind of manipulates the way things are viewed. You might not realise this. I know because I've been doing this for 13 years. I also know a lot about the way YouTube works behind the scenes, the things that you don't see. So that's one of the things that 
we have to always bear in mind always think about that so when I do something or when I stop doing something there's normally a very good reason for it and quite often it's because of YouTube and the yes. way they and the way they treat me they've taken away my little tick the little tick next to my name that's been taken away is it yes when did they do that so that's gone when did they do that Mr Duncan? I don't know they don't like Mr Duncan I don't know why I think it's because I'm old and uh, we, do, we don't appeal to the youngsters because we're old and decrepit. Thanks. Speak for yourself, Mr. Duncan. <laughs> but I think uh, that is a good point, though. Uh, so that's why we do the, Why Mr. Duncan does the live lessons, because that's more fun. Hmm. And well, uh, it's more fun. And y you're just having fun now on YouTube rather than uh, rather well, than spending like a week making something and then you put it out there and because yes. of the algorithms that isn't the reason why nobody gets to see mr duncan's videos that isn't the reason why i do that by the way uh, jeff thinks <laughs> i'm cooking fish later it isn't it isn't the reason why i do that i, I don't know what steve was talking about then I don't, isn't the reason why Sorry? I, I do the live streams because i enjoy doing the live streams That's what i mean yes but it's nothing to do with youtube doing anything to me so that that happened on its own but the reason why I've stopped making big productions that take a long time to make is because YouTube no longer publicizes my videos. It's something I've talked about before. And I did say that it's a very boring subject. Uh, Jeff thinks I'm making uh, cooking fish later. Oh, no, that's Sunday. Yes. Sunday I'm cooking the fish. Always on Sunday after we've finished the live stream. Every Sunday you can catch us live from 2 p.m. UK time. Oh, yes, people love your old lessons. Mm. Belarusia is watching them. Yes, in in, in uh, when she's got spare time. And uh, it would be nice if you could get back to the point where where you could make all these lessons again because you did used to enjoy doing it. Well, I enjoyed doing it, but yes. then I was able to spend my time doing it because there was there was a return. So I, I had viewers. And I was able to make some, not not a lot, but I did. I was able to make some money from doing it. So you can't keep spending your time doing things if you have no return, because you have to you have to live. There is a life that you have to lead and live. And unfortunately, as 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 hard as it is to accept, we do need money to survive we do yes i mean when you put a new video out you you'd like to get 20 or thirty thousand people uh, well uh, video views but you're lucky if you get two or three thousand yes okay i wasn't going to uh, draw attention so to that it's just that no point in you doing it yeah there's so no the illusion on your investment the the illusion is the illusion is that i'm actually not successful or i'm i'm unpopular and that's what people will think so just because people talk about things oh i don't quite know what's going on up there bit of commotion commotion behind us runners i think there's some runners oh, going it? by yes there's always some runners going some people, down the hill some people running uh somebody asked there what's the difference between client and customer well client and customer are pretty much the same thing to be honest so a client is someone who is coming for your services or the thing that you are offering so a client is the person who is receiving a service uh, or a customer is also a person who receives service so it can be anywhere in any way so if you are receiving service or goods from someone or maybe you are being looked after or taken care of you can describe yourself as a customer or client it's just that there's subtle differences in, 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 in certain situations when you would use those when you would use those terms. For example, if you were going into a shop to buy something, or uh, for example, into the, into the Ford uh, dealership to buy an, a new Mustang, then you would be the, the, you would be described as a customer. Mm. Whereas you wouldn't use the word, so you're expecting to get something. In return for money, for example. Okay. So you're the customer. But you, you wouldn't use the word client, for example. 
in in a situation where, for example, you were going to visit visit a lawyer or a solicitor mm. or something like that, they would then describe you as a client. Yes, but that's because that. a client is a more well, it's a professional service. That's right. You would tend to use client yes. more when you are getting a service, but it's a more a professional. That's it. Setting. Also, the other thing with client is is if you go into a shop, it's temporary. So, so the agreement between you is temporary. So you go into a shop, you buy something, you leave the shop and you've gone. That's it. Whereas if you are dealing with a lawyer, a solicitor, or maybe someone who, who has to take care of something over a long period of time, you will then be their client. So quite often also the, the relationship between you and that person providing the service will also be different. So, so yes, client. More for professional uh, so services. So you're getting a service. Like a, a nurse, for example, might describe if she goes to visit people, uh, she might describe her the people that she provides a service for as her clients. Okay. She wouldn't call them her customers. No. Uh, customers, it's more about you're actually, as you say, going in, you're buying something, yes. a physical thing, you're walking out with it. Client is more for not necessarily physical things you might be getting a service hmm. like you might be getting a will from a solicitor or something like that yes uh, it, it it would be used more for sort of not physical things that you would be buying hmm. and walking that's, out with that's it or, or people who are who are on your books so you might have a record of all the customers so they are the people that that regularly come back to you to buy something so they will also be your clients as well yes if, if you were in financial services and you were providing advice financial service advice to people um, you would describe your customers as clients you wouldn't call them customers customers is more for going in and buying a thing and walking out mm, with it that's it uh, uh, whereas a client would be used more for professional services nice. Oh, we seem to be in a loop here. <laughs> We're going round and round in a loop. Loop. But it's a very good question, so thank you for that. It made us think then. You put us on the spot. Yes, well. Put us on the spot. Is it time to go yet, Mr Duncan? No, it's not time to go. Why? Why are you in such a hurry? What else have you got written down on your piece of paper? Um, you... Nothing. Oh. I'm quite hungry, actually. Oh, really? So, i tell you something. I can carry on here. Why don't you go into the kitchen and make some hot cross buns? Right. And yeah. do you want me to bring them out here? Bring them out here and we will eat. We will eat some hot cross buns because it's Good Friday. It's Easter weekend and you're watching English in your ear. That's what we're going to do. Mr. Steve is now going into the kitchen he's going to make some hot cross buns is he i'm not sure <laughs> go on steve quickly i'm hungry <laughs> i'm so bossy someone who is bossy is a person who is very dominant they are always telling someone what to do my mother is very bossy my father is always telling me what to do he is very bossy my manager at work is always picking on me he's always telling me what to do he is so bossy alan gear is here also we have lilia thank you thanks a bundle that's what i thought i guess mr steve didn't understand or could decode my name i I design for you. Oh, I see what you've done there. So your name is actually I design for you. I like it. I like it a lot. Apparently, according to Neo, the, the month of fasting is approaching. So in some religions, people have to stop eating. They have to stop eating for religious reasons normally for a certain period of time i thought i would just uh show people in case they haven't seen these before what we're talking about when we refer to a hot cross bun okay uh now this is what they look like 
when you buy them from the uh, the bakers. I'm sure most people do know, but this is a traditional uh, sweet bread uh, that we buy around Easter time. Mm. And the cross, of course, is supposed to signify uh, Jesus Christ carrying the cross, you know, being yeah. crucified. And so we, we grew up okay. with these. Okay. So you don't have to be religious to appreciate these because they're delicious. Okay. Uh, it, we, t we tend to buy them because we like them because it's sort of slightly sweet bread with yes. currants and raisins and things like that in it and spicy, a bit of spice in there. Yes. Uh, but we buy them because we like them and you often forget that there is a religious significance to these 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 buns so yes. that's what they look like before they've been toasted i'm going to put them in the toaster and put yes. some butter on them please and then we're going to are we going to eat them live yes we're going to eat them here i'm starving right. i thought i would just show people what they look like okay. before go, okay go and uh, make them you know, i make them go and make them All right talking talking blah 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 dear me it's true my mother is very bossy some minutes ago she asked me to clean the refrigerator can you believe it yes parents can be very bossy sometimes people are always obsessed about that damn food says palmyra <laughs> hello from brazil tg idiomas says a big hug from brazil hello to you as well Thank you very much. Yes, I am a little bit hungry. I'm hungry. I'm peckish. I feel as if I could eat something right now. So, yes, I am feeling a little hungry. So, yes, some people during their religious festivals, they will stop eating. So quite often they, they will not eat during the day. And then after a certain time, they will eat something. And then during the day, they will just drink water. But nothing else, nothing else. I don't think I could do that because I love food too much. I really do. Farah says, it's time to go to school, Mr. Duncan. Catch up with you later. See you later, Farah. And have a great day at school. That's nice. You're watching Live English live on Good Friday. I hope you are having a good Friday today. What time is it? It is now coming up to 28 minutes past two. And it's a Friday. Yeah, you got that, Mr. Duncan. That's why I wanted to know about the difference between client and customer. I have clients. But my mother has customers in her shop. Yes, that's right. So a client can be someone you represent or someone you have a professional, a professional relationship with whilst representing them or helping them. In a shop, we normally say customer. Today is my son's birthday. I'm preparing a table for a small celebration whilst listening to you, Olga. Can I say happy birthday to your son? Another year older. Yes. It's your birthday. Yes. Today. It's your birthday. Hip, hip. Hooray. A very good live stream today. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you, Belarusia. We're not going just yet. So don't worry. If you have just joined... Don't worry, we're not going just yet because it's holiday time. Can I just tell you now, next week there will be a very special live stream coming from a certain place. We are taking a little trip sometime next week and we will be doing a live stream from that place. So have a beautiful day. I hope your son has a wonderful time on his birthday <laughs> Lilia says I haven't tried fasting but a friend of mine has he said his skin felt as soft as a baby's bum as soft as a baby's bottom <laughs> I I must be honest I haven't touched many babies bottoms to be honest 
so I wouldn't know hello from Prague says Jana hello Jana and a big hello to Prague it is a Friday and the weather here today is rather nice I must be honest we are having a super day today I feel very spoilt because we are having such a nice time I've had hay fever over the past few days over the past few days I've been sneezing and coughing it actually feels as if I have hay fever I can't believe it mm -mm -mm -mm. whilst fasting from dawn until sunset we refer we refrain refrain that's a great word if you refrain from something it means you avoid it you don't do it you avoid doing it you refrain from doing it whilst fasting from dawn until sunset we refrain from consuming food drinking liquids smoking and engaging in sexual relationships thanks very much from Olga I will show my son his congratulations his English is enough to understand it will be very stimulating for him to study English I think so you are in the right place today because this is live English we are now talking to you live from the birthplace of the English language that is English and this is England <laughs> the sheep are very busy today I wish I could show you the sheep <laughs> the sheep are very busy in the field they are having a lovely time <laughs> hello 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 sheep I'm just saying hello to the sheep as they go by isn't that nice I miss my beloved England a lot I visited England in 2017 for the first time and I loved it London and Bath 20 of the best days of my life thank you I design for you Wow I'm glad you had a nice time this is a beautiful country I always feel very lucky to live here I remember when I returned from China and I think oh there's a dog chasing the sheep look like a wolf someone's dog has got loose and it's chasing all the sheep around so that's the reason why they're running around not very good I'm going to investigate well before you investigate can you can you please oh is that mine that's yours because I've kept the biggest one for myself so that's been toasted look at that and do you want a tissue in case the uh, in case you get the butter all over your fingers so we have to eat these before they go cold mr. Duncan there we go I've toasted it toasted okay and now I'm going to bite straight through the cross mmm how delicious mr. Duncan hot cross buns hot cross buns one a penny two a penny hot cross buns don't get butter on my lovely phone <laughs> mr. Steve's greasy fingers all over my phone Palmyra asks are you using any medicines for your hay fever well I don't think mr. Duncan is using any just yet but um, he will be and in fact you have been sneezing mm. have you not I think that's a farmer going past okay so maybe they're herding I think they're herding the sheep up where are you going I think they're herding the sheep up right uh, in front of us Mr Duncan you can't see this but there's a lot of things going on on the field at I, the don't, back I, of don't us. Think, I don't think that's a farmer I think I think a dog has escaped into the field 
Well, um, there's a mm. man walking around without a top on. Okay. So he's naked from the waist up. It's not a pretty sight. I can see why you're getting excited now. It's not a pretty sight, mm. Jeff, okay. I can tell you. Um, mm. Oh, somebody's Belarusia. It's very difficult to eat and talk at the same time. I oh. thought this was a bad idea. It was your idea, Mr Duncan. It's easy. Belarusia mentions your lesson in Madeira. Oh. Um, in fact, there's been a, a tragedy in Madeira, has there not? There's been a very serious bus crash and uh, about 30 people have been killed in Madeira, very close to where we stayed. I was right. Uh, the farmer is, is in fact herding his sheep uh, using a, a sheep dog. And it's all going on, Mr Duncan. It's very maybe, exciting. Maybe they're taking the sheep away. We ought to turn the camera. We're facing the wrong way. The, your viewers could have seen all this action. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't describe it as action. Mm, there we go. There's a sheep dog now. Okay. We're describing this. Imagine you're on a radio station. We're watching what looks like a wolf uh, going across the field. And it's, and it's uh, herding okay. up the sheep. Okay. It's fascinating. And uh, maybe to you it's fascinating. The Do man we... with no shirt okay, on. Okay. The man with no shirt yeah. on. This is very boring. Is walking a cock. Well, I'm sure it's boring watching us eating a hot crust bun. No, th this is interesting. Uh, uh, Lilia says she finds it hard to wear contact lenses in the summer because of hay fever. And, uh, uh, or bloody hay fever, she says. <laughs> Which is, uh, I yes. hate, I hate hay fever. I can imagine if your eyes are itching because of the pollen, it must be very hard uh, to wear um, contact lenses. You, you're constantly itching your eyes, aren't you? Mm. It must be horrible. I suffer a little, but only, only nasally. But the strange thing is, I'm suffering from hay fever at a very strange time of year. I never get hay fever in April, ever. I normally get it in June or July. Mm -mm -mm. You do sometimes, Mr. Dunk. I think you forget every year you say, I never get hay fever at this time of the year. I don't in April. I you don't do. Get... You have before, Mr. Duncan. Saturino is here. Let's not forget our lovely viewers before Steve goes off on another tangent. Saturino is here. Hello, Saturino. I'm so glad you've managed to catch us live. We're, we're live in the garden today. I don't know where. I don't know how much of the camera Steve wants to take up here. You can go over there slightly, Steve. He's pushing me off. It's just moved, by the way. All oh, right. Yes. <laughs> A lot of people are making comments about uh, their religious uh, beliefs and and. and uh, what they do at different times of the uh, of the year. Here, Farah is making a comment there, answering, uh, obviously replying to a question that was uh, asked. I was earlier. talking about this. Oh, were talk you? Yeah, while while you were making the hot cross bun, we were talking about eating, and some people have to fast during certain religious festivals. And I was saying I couldn't do that. Hmm. I love food too much. <laughs> What does pother mean, or pother, uh, says... Um, pother? I don't know that word. I don't think it's a real word. I think it must be a spelling mistake. Pother. I don't think there's any such word as pother. Mm. We're making people feel hungry. These are... It's sweet bread. Yes, the, the man that went past just... He, he, he wasn't wearing his shirt and he had big man boobs. It was disgusting. That's what Jeff asked. People who don't have nice, attractive bodies should keep clothes on at all time, is my opinion. Only the young should take their clothes off. <laughs> well, only young people have attractive bodies, don't they? Once you start getting into your... Yeah. Unless you look after yourself like me... Then you will continue to look attractive well into well, your 50s. What, what are you doing? 
I don't know. I'm not doing anything, Mr. Duncan. You're constantly repositioning me. Mm. Uh, Mika's, uh, Mika wants a hot crust bun as well. Uh, bon appetit, says Belarusia. That's mm. a very apt phrase for Belarusia to make, yes, I think. Yes, it is. We won't say why. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> yes, uh, Palmyra, it was a German tourist died in a bus crash in Madeira. Very tragic. Um, but uh, we've been to Madeira. It's very, very hilly, and there are lots of very sharp, steep drops away from the... Um, uh, off the roads and in well, fact you recalled a story well, well basically Madeira is, is an island and, and around the island there are lots of roads that just circle around the island and some of them are very high up so but there's nothing at the edge of the road so that you, you just drive along the road and there's nothing to stop you from going over the edge and this is something I remember when we were there yes. we went on a tour around Madeira Island and and I remember we were coming back after after driving around. We were actually turning back the other way, driving back. And the, the, the coach driver was driving so fast. He was driving far too fast. Scary. And I, I said to you at the time, I said, I don't think we're going to get back. I don't think we will return back to the hotel alive. Because all I could see was the edge of the road. Uh, and this bus was... was doing this was was weaving across the road and it was going so fast you've got to be very fit to go to Madeira uh, because uh, it's very hilly uh, the island starts at the sea level and then it just goes up <laughs> so you've got to be very fit to walk around uh, and as a consequence the roads are a bit perilous isn't it volcanic perilous. volcanic I think mm, I think it is I think it's uh, it's a volcanic island I think Extinct. Portuguese. It's 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 not uh, it's not active anymore. Uh, it's not it's not an active volcano. We we went um, on holiday once to uh, to a Greek island. Um, now where which one would that have been, Mister Duncan? Uh, Greek Corfu. Corfu, and uh, I remember we went on some public buses there, and. Uh, Let's just say the drivers were very enthusiastic hmm. and we felt a bit scared. Yes. Uh, that, that is one of the problems when you go away. If you take a tour, then, then you are in someone else's hands and you don't know who the driver is or, or what is going on. So the terrible, tragic events that took place a couple of days ago in Madeira really did ring true with me because I remember our experience when we were in Madeira <laughs> on a bus... And the bus driver was going far too fast. I did not feel safe. Let's They're just... probably very skillful, but uh, it leaves uh, it leaves very few margins for error when you drive uh, when you drive uh, fast like that all the time. Um, now, uh, Carlos says, "Feel hungry? Why don't we say have hungry? Uh, you just don't say that." If you if you you always say you're feeling hungry or you feel hungry, you don't say you you have hunger. Well, uh, yes, not a you phrase can, you use. You can you can have hunger. You can, but we don't use it really. No, you we? can't. You can't have hungry. No, no, no hunger is a different word. Yes, hungry, hungry, and hunger are two different words. So you can have hunger, which is the feeling of being hungry, but you can feel hungry because you're describing it as the thing that you experience. Uh, in India, says uh, Gaurav, uh, we eat chapatis instead of bread. And uh, yes, we like that. I like you chapatis. Can, you can get those here, or, or naan bread, Yes. Uh, in the Indian restaurants here. And uh, one of my favourites is uh, naan breads with, uh, with, with dal, lentil dal. Mm. I and, and the, could live on that. And the thing to remember, in India, Indian food isn't the same as it is here in the UK. So in the UK, a lot of Indian food is spicy, lots of spice, lots of chilies. But real Indian food quite, quite often doesn't have spices. I think it varies from region to region. Mm. Uh. <laughs> Jeff, says, <laughs> Jeff says it's 63... 
I don't look in the mirror when I shower. It is very gross. Something gross is disgusting. So, but what? But why do you have a mirror in your bathroom anyway? That's the question I want to ask. Why yeah. do you? Why do you have a full-length mirror in your bathroom? I think that's that's the real question that should be answered. To be honest, uh, Lilia says, "Shall we? Why don't we do idioms?" Uh, with the word god in them steve steve has a bit of wind do you want me to it's like a baby you know when a baby wants to wants to burp so let me just is that okay it's rather annoying do you have a little burp i've Can... i've already been doing that very very sur surreptitiously steve has some air that he has to get up i don't think Le uh, lily i don't think uh, i don't think duncan would be keen on me doing idioms with the word god in them but i could do that Idiom. what do people think well there can't be many how many? Most of them are probably profanities. Yes, but well, no, you you don't use God as an idiom or religious idioms. Maybe. Yes, religious idioms maybe, religious. but like you haven't got a prayer. <laughs> That's a good one. So if you don't have a hope, if something is futile, you might say to someone, "There's no point trying to do that. You haven't got a prayer." See. So there's one straight uh, away out of my brain. Did you see that? It just came out of my brain. Uh, Belarusia says here in Buenos Aires, people dr are mad drivers. Yes, uh, I can imagine. I can tell you where the worst, be. the worst drivers in the world, China, definitely, without a doubt. Having lived there for many years in China, terrible drivers and one of the reasons why the drivers are so bad in China is because many of them drive without ever having a test or lessons they just learn on their own how to drive a car and then they normally bribe the officials they give money to the officials to get their license with without ever taking lessons or a test can you believe that uh, Lilia wants to uh, witness a volcanic eruption Ooh, from you, a distance. Well, with, with Steve, when he gets indigestion, so when Steve gets indigestion, it's a little bit like a volcano because all this hot stuff, all this hot lava comes up, doesn't it? And it burns. There's, there's a couple of places you could probably go and pretty much see small eruptions you could go to hawaii Ooh. or you could go to iceland yes well probably. Not, not long ago there, there was uh one of the volcanoes in hawaii what was erupting was wasn't it do you remember was, about, yes. about three or four weeks ago because of course hawaii is a group of islands uh which is basically comes from volcanic uh activity Oh, it's all going on at the backfield today, Mr. Duncan. It's all going on. Uh, trust in God, but keep your powder dry. Uh, that's that's an idiom Wait, I uh -huh. used. Yes, maybe, well, maybe, uh, maybe the that's, other week. Maybe they got it from you. <laughs> yes, so that that's it exactly. Yes, I used that very idiom about okay. three weeks ago. But there aren't many. That's that's the thing I'm trying to say. There aren't many. You don't often hear God used as an idiom. I don't know why, but uh, certainly religious things, religious things. You might say, look, I, 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 I was out the other night and I saw a flying object in the sky. I think it was a Martian for, from Mars. Honestly, I swear to God. You see? So you might say that is a way of saying, yes, I'm, I'm being honest. Honestly, it really did happen. Yes, because if you say swear on the Bible or or, or swear on God, then mm. uh, then then you you are saying to that person, look, I must be telling the truth because yes. I would never uh, risk my life uh, by 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 upsetting uh, God or, yes. or the Bible. <laughs> yes, That's why I... we swear on the Bible when we when we're in court. I'm innocent. I'm uh, innocent. I swear. Because we assume that if you swear on the Bible in court, then you <laughs> would uh, then you must be telling <laughs> the truth. Um, and it's still, of course, used today, probably throughout the world. I'm not sure. Certainly here and in the in 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 the U.S. Uh, then, if you uh, have to go to court and give evidence. 
then uh, they ask you to swear on the Bible first because they assume that you would be too scared uh, not to tell the truth. Um, but of course, if you don't believe in a higher power, then uh, you'll be free just to, you're not going to worry about the consequences of lying because you don't believe that that is true anyway. Um, so uh, it's probably you've got to be very careful uh, trusting people these days in court, uh, swearing on the Bible and giving evidence because what if they're an atheist, then they can just lie and it, they don't think there's going to be any consequence to them. Uh, yes, uh, trust in God and keep your powder dry. Okay. Uh, that was an idiom I used a couple of weeks ago, which means, yes, trust in a higher power, but at the same time, be ready. Be ready to uh, to fight or to do whatever it is I'm you want to, move, to do. Can you just move uh, over slightly, because I'm trying to get out the sun. Okay. The sun is coming round. Uh, Faster. Okay, right. Uh, <laughs> Bella says, Mr. Steve's digestion is like a volcano. Mr. Duncan's imagination is immense. That's nice. Uh, all right, Mr. Vodka's here. I'm sorry about sneezing there. I've, I've got a bit of hay fever. I hope it didn't enjoy... Uh, sorry, I hope it didn't ruin your enjoyment of today's live stream, for which I apologise. Of course, we can go to Japan, says Mika, and Mount Fuji. Uh, they have many volcanoes in Japan. Um, so that's three places. Go to Japan. Actually, let's go to Japan because we don't know anyone in uh, in Iceland or Hawaii that watches us. So well, we don't know anyone in Japan, do we? We're all Mika. Yes, so, but I, I don't think Mika. I don't think Mika wants you and I to go and live in her house. No, I'm talking about uh, Lilia wanted to go and see a live volcano. And I said, go to Iceland or Hawaii. And uh, Mika has, 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 has reminded us that we could go to Japan. Oh, I see. As well, uh, if we wanted to view an active volcano. Mirella. Hello, Mirella. Mirella says hello to us. Hello. Hello, Mirella. Nice to see you here today. We are live on Friday. We've been here for a long time. I think we've been here for about, let's see, about... Oh, nearly two hours. Don't worry, Jessica. Duncan hasn't got a cold. He's just got a bit of hay fever. It's hay fever. I apologise. Uh, I'm sorry for sneezing. And Olga said she thought it was only her that uses toilet paper <laughs> to blow her nose. No, I, I, I think everybody does. They just don't have the courage to admit it. Toilet paper is useful for many things. <clears throat> I don't know what you're suggesting, Mr Duncan. Uh, what are you doing, says Carlos. Who? Matrix asks, do I like Jesus? Do you, do you like oh, Jesus? Have you ever met him? Well, I don't wish to comment, actually, because uh, we don't like to, to, to really give our views on this channel because I um, don't think it's appropriate, really. Do you, Mr Duncan? Well, well, everyone knows what I think. I don't follow any religion or any, any, any sort of religious belief whatsoever. I just believe in human beings, and I believe in now. Well, now. Uh, the the answer to the question would be yes, I do, but that doesn't necessarily. Uh, no, let's. I'm just going to say yes to that. I'm just going to say yes. You couldn't not like Jesus, could you? If he existed, you couldn't not like him. You would have to like him because he was a good person. I also like Harry Potter. I think Harry Potter's quite nice. Ah. Uh, and Alice in Wonderland. Thank you. Ta-ta. Bye-bye. And I hope you also have a joyous evening and uh, uh, a lovely Easter as well, Lilia. Come to Guatemala. We'd love to. Um, we'd love to. Um... Uh, a couple of donated tickets flight would be nice of course we'll be uh, contributing to global warming if we go on a flight don't worry about that we're going on a flight next week we're flying somewhere next week but where where are we going oh we will reveal the place 
that we're going to next week because we will be there. Yes. Saturino says, do you use bog paper <laughs> bog. when you blow your nose in the UK? Well, not in public is what I would say. Um... <laughs> Uh, normally, uh, you, not in public. At home, yes, because nobody can see you, but you wouldn't go out in public with loo roll and blow your nose in the UK. Loo no, roll? No, definitely not, or bog paper. Yes, bog paper. Bog paper is a, is a crude slang term for toilet paper. Did you know that there was a singer called Lou Rolls? <laughs> Jeff's, being, Jeff's being rude. On the live stream, we won't comment on it. Let's have a look. I can think of things that erupt, like like a spot on your face. If exactly. you if you if you if you make your spot go pop, it will erupt. So yes, a lot of things erupt. You can also erupt with anger as well. So you so you might become very angry, and you will erupt with rage mm, right. are you going to Greece don't know no mate no don't say no <laughs> sorry about that oh you mean next week so uh, disregard what mr. Steve just said yes pasta yes exactly oh, yes exactly what mm. And Mika says we can stay in our house if we don't mind sleeping on the floor with a, a very a, a thin, uncomfortable bed. Well, I've, I've seen, I remember in China, sometimes the beds were, were not very comfortable because you would just have a very thin cloth or, or something that was, wasn't very thick on the bed. And sometimes the beds were very hard. So, mm. yes, I remember that. Bella says you believe in human beings. Do you believe in aliens? Well, I believe in human beings because I'm surrounded by them. I, I don't know about aliens because I've never met one. I've never seen one. I'm sure they are out there in, uh, in this huge, gigantic universe that we live in. Uh, well, I think it's almost 100% certain, but whether they're existing right now... Whether they're visiting us, visiting us, visiting us, uh, is probably unlikely. Uh, Saturino says, are we agnostic or atheist? Hmm, yes. Good question. I would probably say I'm agnostic. Liar. No, I, I probably would say agnostic. Uh, because I don't think you can ever totally prove or disprove the existence of a higher being. I don't think you... I mean, yes, we can use our logic to say, no, that can't happen, but I don't think you could ever totally say that it wasn't the yes. case. Uh, what, what use is logic? Why use logic? Well, the thing is, Mr. Duncan, is that uh, we don't understand everything yes. that exists in the universe. Okay. So therefore, we cannot definitively say that there is no God. No. We can't say that. It's a bit like... we don't actually ooh. know. Yes, okay, we get it, Steve. It's a bit like Schrodinger's cat. Do you know that? Schrodinger's cat. Schrodinger's cat. There is a cat in the box. It has been there many days is it alive or dead or is it both Ooh, very deep that's quantum physics i believe mr duncan very deep uh but yes we're getting yes let's not get onto that mr duncan well you got onto it i didn't i was answering a question yes well you, you don't have to answer all the questions that appear on the live stream uh it's not cold out here at all uh very Garab, hot. it's not cold. It's actually quite warm, uh, and Mr. Duncan's just got hay fever. It's hay fever. Cold. It's allergy. Well, so I'm sensitive to pollen, pollen floating around in the air. Uh, I hope you're coming to Brazil, says Bella. Well, I would love to come. Will you stop farting, Mr. Duncan? 
I don't know whether the microphone will pick that up, but Mr. Duncan is blowing wind. I'm not. Yes. Um, it was the sheep. Can we say highly being for God? A higher being or a creator. You could say a higher being is something that is, is some above our level of intelligence, like a, a God would be described as a higher being. Uh, um, so... Um, Yes, that you could use that as a phrase. Or an alien. Uh, well, you know, some yes. people do believe that. Yes, or a higher form of life, or a more intelligent form yes. of life. Yes. So, so yes. anything that's superior to human beings. Yes, you could use a higher... But yeah, I mean, it probably would be disrespectful to just describe god as a higher being god is god if he exists so you wouldn't you, you would just say you you, you know you why, wouldn't do, use... why do you keep getting stuck on that subject well because people are asking lots of questions Mr. Yes, Duncan. lots of people let's see i'm just going to be the judge of how many people have asked what are you doing with go. that paper what are you doing with that paper yeah that that was the question ages ago from saturino Okay, I'm I'm trying to see all the no there nothing. Go. There we go. Yes, but that's what you just answered. That's it. Two, two, two questions. Well, they're questions. Yes, and they're important questions to ask and to yes. have an opinion on. I think Steve is just scared. You see, not to say no because the the problem I'm not is scared. the problem is I, I think I think you know we, we we all worry about offending people, but there are people that believe in things and people that don't. It doesn't mean they're right or wrong. You see, that's it. Jeff heard you. Uh, no, I, I. You see, what annoys me is uh, uh, sometimes about atheists. I did not fart. Is yes, he did. I didn't. Is that um, they can sometimes appear to be a little arrogant in uh, and and uh, in their assertion that Sorry? Oh, there cannot be Sorry, a creator. Did... Yes, well, uh, but 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 they don't know because what we knew scientifically a hundred years ago is totally different from what we know now, and okay. will be totally different from what we know in another hundred years. Yes, okay. because we're always discovering new things, so yes. we can never actually know you the know, answer to the question. You, you are going down a very dark and I'm not going slippery path. Why? Well, because there are many things you can do, you can say to, to counter argue that. Yeah, there are well, so many. And uh, well, yes, of yes, course. just very obvious things, and I don't really want to get into that conversation. Yeah. The, the more you talk about this, the deeper we get into it. It's a bit like getting getting chewing gum in your hair. Depends on your definition. I always say talking about religion is like getting chewing gum in your hair. That the more you try to remove it. The, the, the more tangled it becomes. So it's best just to say nothing. Uh, somebody here who's, who, I'm very sorry, but we can't pronounce your name because um, there's that, a lot of symbols. That looks like, I think it's Korean. It looks like Korean. It's my first time to watch you. Where are you? Yes, where are you? We are now in England. You are watching... A live stream from England. It is now five minutes past three <clears throat> on a Friday. And it is a public holiday here in the UK. So Mr. Steve, Mr. Steve is free and I am free. We have nothing to do. So we thought we would come outside and talk to you live. Normally we are here on Sunday from 2 p.m. I have got lots of other things I could be doing, Mr. Duncan. 2 p.m. UK time every Sunday. And I'm going to go off and do them very shortly. Tang yeah. Tangled. Sorry, I'm just answering some English questions. Tangled. Alamgir, if something... Sorry, Jessica. If something is tangled, it means it is in a mess, interwound. Things are wound together and you can't undo them. They are tangled. It's a great word, that. Tangled. Yes, if you've got different electrical appliances and they've all got cords and all those cords become mixed up together and difficult to separate, you say that they're tangled. The wires are tangled. If you've got a hose pipe... Uh, 
that you might use for washing your car or, or, or watering your garden and the hose pipe becomes all interconnected and you can't separate it then there we go that cable is tangled Can up. You yes it's all it's all tangled you can't you can't separate that it's tangled so there you go uh, what can you say in an interview says Guarav to show that I am the right candidate to trust well you just I would say my advice would be just be yourself yes. be truthful I think also not from necessarily what you say but also your appearance and your manner as well so when you go for a job interview quite often a person will look at you they will make an instant judgment won't they they will and we call this a first impression so first impressions are very important especially in a situation where someone is evaluating what you are like they are trying to work out whether you are a good person a good person or a bad person yes find out about the company or the organization that you're going to go for an interview for make sure you've done some background on that uh, and uh, just be enthusiastic and uh, put your positive the things that what you need to do is match up what your talents are Mm. with what the job requirement is yes and they need to be able to see that the talents you have will 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 be suitable mm. for the job role That's that it. you're going for you and have to prove that you are you are suitable for the job and have examples examples have examples of when you've done something that shows that uh, that you will be suitable for that job show give it have examples that you can show them or tell them about or oh, when I did this in my last job this is how I overcame this things like that examples of behaviors uh, and uh, things that you did that show that you would be suitable for them in their job role and they might give you a list of competencies which is a very common way to interview people now competencies uh, to show uh, which are basically qualities that you might that they want in their job and you have to have examples of when you've demonstrated those different competencies and that will help you a lot with your uh, interviewing techniques uh, is it so tangled is a similar phrase then yes entwined Ta tangled. tangled entwined things are wrapped together in a way that they can't be undone or released easily yes you use the word tangled with hair quite commonly don't you yes. my hair is tangled mm -hmm. but as, as somebody's already pointed out it's not a phrase that mr steve would ever use or me because uh, we, we don't have much hair well not on our heads anyway lewis has just come back from his his walk how lovely so you've had your 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 daily fitness uh, regime and uh, now you're going to sit back and watch two minutes of us because we're going to be going soon mm. unfortunately but we will uh, be going soon we've been here for over two hours standing here in the garden talking to you what's that about sunday yes are you having the little lint bunny chocolate oh yes something nice to eat because traditionally on easter sunday you will have an easter egg at the moment we don't we don't seem to have one but apparently According to Steve, he has hidden an Easter egg somewhere in the house and I have to find it. Connell says her earphones always get tangled. Yes, they mm. do. The, cord, yes. the cords always get tangled. Tangled. Yes. There was, uh, a, there was a Disney movie about a young princess called Tangled. Uh, yes, I've got a surprise for Mr. Mr. Duncan on Sunday with the Easter egg. Now we are cutting down on our consumption of uh, chocolate. Um, we do this every now and then. Uh, we say, oh, we're going to cut down and then it gradually, the amount of chocolate we eat creeps up and up and up week by week. But I'm cutting down because, well, number one, uh, Mr. Duncan needs to lose some weight. Uh, and uh, number two, um, 
I went for a blood sugar test and it was high. So I, I'm going to cut back on sugar. Uh, what, a, what a strange thing to reveal. I, well, yes. Well, I've got to have another test to see if it's all right. But Please don't tell us any more of your medical problems. Oh, uh, we'd be on for another two hours. Because there are lots. Steve <laughs> has a lot of things going on all over his body. Yes, yes, there we go. I really want to say something here. Shira Blade says, yes, I'm agnostic. I don't say to anyone, I believe our civilization is still ignorant about these things. And I've chosen to keep it inside. Mm. Yeah, that's true. We don't really know. Okay, um, then. Ooh. What you believe and okay. what we know are that's two it. different things. Yip. Just, just. Uh, Franco's going. Goodbye. See you later, Franco. Oh, we... Mika walked 13 kilometres along a river. That sounds very nice. That's, yes. We might do some walking next week. What do you think while we're away? We are going away next week. We are hoping to do a live stream from the place we are going to. It isn't in England. Oh, it's somewhere else. But where? All will be revealed next week. Don't forget to look out for the live stream next week. Uh, Palmyra says that uh, she will be painting eggs tomorrow as it's an old tradition. Mm, we used to do it here. Did we? Yes, egg painting. D didn't you ever do it at school? Uh, no. Well, oh, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Did you forget? <laughs> I forgot. We would, we would get eggs and then we would paint them with little designs. Design. A nice little colourful egg for Easter. The, 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 the um, egg hunts is another popular thing that uh, that uh, uh, parents do now. They, they have parties. They hide eggs around the garden hmm. or around the house. And then the children have to go and find them. Mm -hmm. I think that's become quite popular over the last few years. Uh, uh, Apparently Louis thinks we're going to put lots of weight on because of all the chocolate. Uh, well, I've only bought, we're only buying one this year because we're cutting down, because they're very bad for you. Uh, can we say other languages? We don't really speak, uh, I don't, I speak a little bit of French. We don't normally say, say other languages, we normally say, speak. So do you, can you speak any other languages, or do you speak any other languages, or do you know any other languages? I had to learn Chinese when I was in China. I used to be quite good at French when I was at school. But uh, I have enough trouble with English, to be honest. Jeff says there, oh, what a tangled web we weave. That's a good use. Uh, that's, that's an idiom, I would say. It, it is. Mr. Duncan. Yes. What a tangled web we weave. So yes, if you're if you're telling lots of lies and dis mistruths about things, so you could see each lie and 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 mistruth as as, as like a a cable of uh, like a wire, hmm. and they all become intertwined, and you can't really tell what's the truth anymore and what isn't. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when we try to deceive. That's I think, it. I th is it Shakespeare? Probably, probably. You've probably got at least a, 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 a nine in ten chance that that is correct. A nine in ten. I like that. I like those odds. We're not giving any more details away, Sue Cat. No. no. When are you leaving for the mystery place? Ooh. Well, I'm not saying no. We mm. want to. We want to re reveal it as a big surprise. So that's next week. I'm sure a few people will say, Mr. Duncan, are you getting on a plane with Mr. Steve? Oh, oh you, you will be destroying the environment. And my answer is, if it's good enough for Emma Thompson, it's good enough for Mr. Steve and Mr. Duncan. Well, we haven't been in a plane. I haven't been in a plane for about eight years. That's it. Can't remember the last time I flew anywhere. Well, I think it was recently, wasn't it? Didn't you go away oh. with your company? Oh, that was years ago. That was here. You were, we were here. Yeah, but it's at least six years ago. Really? And that wasn't my choice anyway. Oh, I see. Uh, comment, uh, bonjour, ça va? Uh, comment allez-vous? Uh, bonjour, comment allez-vous? Je m'appelle Mr. Steve. I speak Lebanese, Arabic, French, English and Portuguese fluently, wow. says Bella. Well, you're much cleverer than us. I am. Uh, I am 
I'm impressed. I was never very good at languages, <laughs> apart from English. You're not, you're not very good at that, <laughs> come to think of it. <laughs> and Bella's also learning Spanish and German. You, you've got to be very clever. You've got to have a certain brain to be able to learn languages like that. So I, I commend you, Bella. Mr. Steve isn't bilingual or by anything. Sweden or Nancy? No, I ha we haven't been to Sweden or Ecuador. No, never. Never been to Sweden? No. And never uh, been to Ecuador. Two very different places. I don't know. Where's the nearest I've been to Sweden? I've been to... Um, I can't remember. Britain? I've been to Britain. I've been to Britain Sweden. is quite close to Sweden. Sweden is a Nordic, what we call a Nordic country. Okay. A group of countries, sort of in the north of Europe. Um, I can't remember where I've been. No, this is fascinating. I, I'm getting tired now, Mister Duncan. Okay. You know I get tired. Well, if you go in, I will wrap up the live stream because the sun is now coming round, and I'm I'm getting burnt on my arm. Look, can you see? So Walter Scott said oh what a tangled web we weave thank you very much jeff thank you for that thank goodness for google well he probably is clever and knows that yes, he doesn't or, have to necessarily google it jeff is very good at well it, the fact that it took him so long to tell us that you see i think he was googling where was that where did i go when i was in that choir and i went to, I, I, I went to uh, helsinki didn't i and i can't what? remember which country helsinki is in are you asking or uh, telling yes. me Wherever Helsinki is, that's where I went, which is probably not too far from Sweden. Um, I can't think of the... I'm getting tired now. This is Jeff using the internet. Don't be, don't be disrespectful. Uh, how do you know? Jeff might be very clever and might know without having to look anything up. Uh, he knows... Uh, he certainly knows lots of uses of the word... Uh, uh, set. Set. Uh, <laughs> which I've, we've never got round to. Never. And we never will. Uh, what city, what, what, what country is the capital, what, whose capital is Helsinki? Google. I can't remember. Romania, is it? That's not Romania, is it? Lewis. No, no. Uh, oh, my brain's gone. Good, you're doing I, well there, Steve. Gone. Uh, I have been living in France for over 50 years, says Lewis. That's Interesting. Nice. Very good. Very interesting. Bella says, thank you. I'm a language teacher. I'm always trying to improve myself. I've been following Mr. Duncan for more than 10 years. Oh, my goodness. Thank you very much for your, your loyalty. I do appreciate it. I think we will wrap up now because it looks like Steve is just running out of energy. I think he needs to be plugged back in. We have to plug Mr. Steve into the electricity to charge him back up. Do you We're, know what it is? I think the sugar from that hot crust bun... Has, has, has gone into my system and raised my blood sugar and, it, and, it, and it's made me all sleepy and tired. Mm. Mm. Finland, exactly, that's it. Thank you very much, Sue Cat. I couldn't remember. When you're live, sometimes you can't, your brain doesn't work fast enough. I'm being attacked by a wasp. Yes, I've been to Finland. <laughs> uh, it was, it was uh, very cold when we went, although at the time they said, I went in February it was minus 10 and they said they were having a heat wave, mm. which I thought was quite funny because it was you. usually minus 20 there at that particular time. Finland, yes, thank you very much. Right, bye-bye. And Mr Steve... See you we'll, on Sunday. We'll be back on Easter Day, which is Sunday, which is the day after tomorrow. We'll have chocolate all round, all over our face. That's nice. Bye-bye. Bye. That's Mr. Steve gone. Some people might say good riddance. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going now. Thanks a lot for your company for the past two hours. Over two hours I've been here in my garden talking to you live on YouTube. I hope you've enjoyed this. Don't forget to tell your friends about this as well because it's very hard for me to get noticed these days on YouTube. I know I keep talking about this. But because of the changes that YouTube have made over the past couple of years, it has become more difficult for me to be noticed and found. And even people who are subscribed to me don't get to see my video lessons or my live streams. It's very sad. 
Thanks for your goodbyes. Mr. Steve has gone back into the house. I think we're going to have a cup of tea now, which sounds lovely. I will leave you. I will see you on Sunday. We will be back for two hours of live streaming on Sunday from 2 p.m. UK time. You can see the details under the, under the screen right there. Can you see it going across? If you would like to make a small donation through PayPal, the details are also under here as well. This is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thank you, Olga. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you, Lena, Alessandra. Thank you to Martha. Thank you, Mika, Beatriz. Also, Jessica, JC Geordie, Martha in Poland. Also, Gwarav. Thank you very much. A big hello and goodbye to India. Also to Palmyra. That's very nice. Have a super duper Easter. Enjoy the rest of your Good Friday. And of course, you know what's coming next. Yes, you do. Until Sunday, stay happy. Enjoy your Easter weekend. And ta-ta for now.